I'm Ashlyn, welcome back to Collection Cut Down. Today's movie is on 28 Days Later, a British horror film directed by Danny Boyle. The closest thing we've done to horror on this channel so far has been 13th Warrior, starring Antonio Banderas. And I actually do like horror movies, um, but I tend to prefer the more action-oriented ones rather than the creepy, jump-scary ones. So I, I tend to like the final girl ones that have, you know, the women battling the serial killer or evil forces or whatever it is right to the end. And I most prefer them when those girls get a happy ending. In 28 Days Later, I've only seen this movie once, but the thing that I most remember about it and the reason I think I bought it in the first place is because I remember it having a happy ending. Not just for a leading female final girl trope type thing, but for two people. And if I remember correctly, they're either a couple at the end or there's like hints that they kind of become a family unit or something. And maybe there's even like a child they're looking after. Um, I don't remember, but I remember that having an impression on me because I'm so used to the final girl thing. And so, you know, I've talked before about how I'm a romantic, I like my happy endings. So um, to have an ending like that, that, you know, felt like a family unit kind of ending, I really liked that and I'm 99% sure that's almost the entire reason I bought this. I do remember thinking it was a really good, solid film, but not necessarily to my ideal tastes, if that makes sense. I think the only other thing I remember about this movie, and this might be a conflation of two movies, so I remember him kind of maybe waking up. So the lead character is played by Killian Murphy, and he wakes up in a hospital, and I think, like, all of London is dead and gone or something like that. I remember him walking through empty streets. If I remember rightly, Resident Evil starts in a very similar way and they're both horror movies with zombies from a similar period. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm probably the first one to get Gillian Murphy and Miley Jovovich confused, but uh, it's entirely possible that's what's happening right now. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I remember from this film. Uh, basically the beginning and the end. I also think the female lead in this is a woman of colour, and I always like to see that, because as I've discussed before, I'm a big pro-diversity type person. I think that that's another thing that must have appealed to me, because I like female lead characters, particularly in more action-y, horror-y type genres, and it's really great to see when some of those women are women of colour as well. So having only seen this movie once, I am very interested to see it again, particularly because I remember it being good, um, but also in the years I've owned this DVD, which uh, from memory is quite some time, I haven't really had any desire to re-watch it, so I'm very curious to reassess it um, based on what I remember of it and how accurate that is, but also just see, you know, if it's something that I need to keep in my collection. I am looking forward to it. It's a bit of a longer movie, so I'll see you in two hours. Just seen 28 Days Later again, and uh, yeah, it's a good film. I remembered correctly about most things, so I remembered right about it sort of starting, at least his part of the story starts with him waking up in hospital and the city of London being empty, and I remember the ending with the him and Naomi Harris's character and the girl. One thing that I actually remember that I didn't mention in my preamble, there was a scene and it's because I was absolutely convinced that happened in the second movie, so I was waiting to mention it for that review. <laughs> and so that was the scene, uh, it turns out it was Brendan Gleeson's character in this, where he looks up and the drop of blood falls in his eye. So if you've got 
eye trauma problems, uh, probably avoid at least that scene, um, and another scene later. So yeah, probably just the whole movie. So that, that scene with the drop of blood, um, and then he gets infected, that was seared into my memory. Um, but yeah, for some reason I thought it happened in the second movie, so I don't know if there's like a callback to it, or if I just... no memory... it's totally possible, I'm just remembering wrong, so anyway. There's a lot to like about this film, um, I mentioned the opening briefly, well, it's not really the opening because it's kind of a prologue with animal activists um, releasing animals, which is how the infection first spreads. But after that, then it starts Killian Murphy's character's arc, and so it opens with him in the hospital. And what I really liked about that whole sequence was the way the music was used, so the score, because most of it is silent, and then the music very slowly comes in like quite a way into the scene and then it just keeps building and building and building and building as he finds more and more information about what's been happening and stuff and that was really effective, um, I thought that was great. There was other scenes uh, a little bit later where I didn't think the music was used quite as well but it's really not my area of expertise so that's probably just a preference thing. In that opening scene I also thought the scene where he hit the priest and then was like oh I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done that. I thought that was funny, because you might remember in my 12 Rounds 2 review where I said that I kind of wish that he apologised after hitting people um, more than the first time, like, and uh, <laughs> so I kind of liked that they did that with Killian Murphy's character in this. Again, it wasn't really a thread that ran through the film, like, uh, I, I certainly think that he was uh, a little bit softer and more vulnerable than you get in action movies, so I did enjoy that because it was clear that he was affected by what was happening emotionally and, and I really appreciate that in a character, particularly a male character because you don't get to see a lot of that and I do wish that there was more vulnerability in male characters in films, particularly of the action horror kind of variety. I thought the use of red light in this film was kind of weird. The red light in particular, I know it's done to kind of create that weird atmosphere, but usually in movies it kind of comes, I don't know what the word is, in sound I think is diegetic, where it's like within the world itself, um, but in this it was um, not like that. For example, they had like the rage zombies and then they'd do a close-up of their face and they'd be like Rah! and the f like it would be red light on the face but that wasn't coming from anywhere within the film that's like the world of the film because you know they'd, they'd then cut back and there's no red light anywhere there so um that happened quite a few times and I found that a little bit distracting. It was weird watching this particular DVD, um, there was some, I don't know if they're technical issues with the DVD or with the film or something, but there was a lot of kind of, there was a lot of odd choices or <laughs> faults. <laughs> um, so, for example, there's like a scene where they're driving down the highway and there's meant to be flowers or something on either side but they're, like, blurred, they look like a painting, and I'm like, I, I don't think that my eyes are that bad. There was definitely something wrong, so I don't know if it was meant to be a choice that I didn't understand, or whether that was actually, there was something wrong, or, I, I don't know, there was, but there was a lot of shots like that that kind of looked like they were filmed through gauze, and, um, yeah, I didn't love them, but, uh, you know, your mileage will probably vary on that. I, I tend to have trouble with artistic choices that you can't tell whether <laughs> they're faults or not. It's like, uh, maybe the focus puller didn't do their job on that shot, or maybe it's, you know, meant to look like that. Who knows? One thing I did really like is the way that they, in the, the last, you know, third of the film, quarter of the film, where they're in the sort of army barracks. 
and uh, the way that it builds and and the viewer feels like there's something wrong but you can't really pinpoint what it is and there's like this sort of subtle vibe going through all of the the whole thing and I, I thought that was really you know well directed well well conceived the because you feel uncomfortable the entire time you're there but you're not really sure why and then it's sort of revealed though of course you know oh <sighs> uh, why don't women always need to be either raped or threatened with rape like that's I'm over it let's just tell different stories please <laughs> So, uh, yeah, didn't enjoy that part at the end. But, you know, the lead up to that, I thought, was um, exceptionally well done. However, going back to the technical problems, I um, there was a whole sequence there that um, I didn't see because there's actually something wrong with this DVD. <laughs> uh, so I had to skip ahead. Um, I don't think I missed that much, but, uh, yeah, the, it was just skipping and jumping and cleaning it didn't help, so, um, hope it wasn't anything good. <laughs> I do think I remember that happening last time as well, so I think it's probably just a faulty DVD. One thing I've always liked about horror movies is they're usually super good at using low budget, so it's, it's a notoriously low budget genre and... So they're often very contained stories and quieter stories in many ways. And that's something that I actually really dig about the genre because I think it requires a lot of ingenuity, which you don't necessarily see in other genres. And I think that this film was good at that. You know, it told a wide story while just focusing on such a small group and, you know, few locations and yet you you really got a bigger sense of the world and I think that that was very cleverly done. There were some minor details that I really liked just you know quick shots and things like that that again really helped with the world building and I think my favorite was um, that when they were driving and you saw that the wind turbines were still working they're just like ticking away and uh, I really liked that. It kind of almost gave it a subtle environmental message as well. But, you know, renewable energy is right there and it's going to work even in the apocalypse. So yeah, this film, uh, a mixed bag. I think there's a lot of good stuff about it. I did still really like the ending, that it was a happy ending, um, as happy as it can be in an apocalypse. And I'm so glad that they chose that ending because I'm actually pretty sure there's an alternate ending that's a lot more depressing so uh, yeah I, I really enjoyed that and um, I, I really enjoyed a lot about the film but at the same time you know I don't really feel a huge urge to keep it like there was enough flaws there that I didn't love the film and there was no particular scenes or elements that I know that I'm gonna need to see again. Um, it's really just, you know, it's a fine movie, but yeah, it's it's not a favourite of mine. I was tempted to um, make a decision on that one after I've rewatched this one. Uh, and I think, though, that um, particularly given the technical problems with the DVD, I think it's safe to say that I'm gonna get rid of that one and if I utterly adore this one which I'm not sure I will then I'll probably consider getting a new copy so I'll see you all back here for 28 weeks later next time in the meantime if you agree or disagree with any of my assessments or just want to say hi please leave a comment and subscribe if you're enjoying the video so you get notifications when I post a new one I'd love to interact with my viewers, but otherwise, bye for now, and happy watching! Fun fact, which may not be fun to anyone but me, but the font on my first five <laughs> books is actually this same font here. Uh, my cover designer picked it, and I think it works really well. <laughs>